All right, guys. Everybody been uh, doing good. Yeah. Yeah, God's been uh, it's been a crazy, crazy year so far for me. Right? Um, but no, anyhow, um, this this is just the reality that we live in, and, and you know God's been faithful, and He's He's going to continue to be faithful, um, even in times like I'm going through, right? Uh, my dad just passed away. Yeah, I went to the bathroom to grab some uh, napkin because this passage of Romans has just been man, a, a life passage for me for the past like two, three weeks. And, and you know, this is something that's been just resonating in me. So, you know, I was like, man, I'm going to try not to cry, you know, up here, so um, forgive me. But uh, with that being said, um, I'm going to pray for us to start. And uh, we'll go from there. God, we uh, thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, Lord. Even as broken people, you, you loved us. You gave your son for us. And Lord, as today we just maybe... May I wrap up Romans for now. I pray that these words that we've been going through in Romans, I pray my brother and sister may see in where they stand with you. And to see that, man, you love us. Even when we are, you know, we are ungodly people, yet yeah, you love us. Yet yeah, when we deserve death, you give us life. And Lord, so we thank you, we praise you, your holy and precious name, Jesus. All right, guys, so like I said, um, you know, if I drop some tears here and there, I'll forgive me. Um, but, you know, God's work is, well, it's not finished. It will always be a journey for all of us. And so if you guys have your Bible, uh, turn with me to Romans 5. And we're going to read from Romans 5 to uh, verses 8. And so I also want to just kind of, um, I guess, give us a news. Right? Uh, this is where I'm going to end Romans for us. And we're going to uh, shift gear and uh, go into you know, something else. We're, we're going to look into uh, a different passage uh, with me to do and uh, uh, show through, right? And so uh, I'm going to conclude Romans here for us. And I hope that is a good uh, stopping point for us. And uh, if you guys man, wish to do more research and more studies in the book of Romans and more in depth into chapter 5, I encourage you guys to do so. Um, I too will continue to do so as well and um, continue to, you know, just you know, dive into uh, Romans my, by myself, you know, at my own free time. So I encourage you guys as well man, to walk this journey with me if you guys want to. Um, but with that being said, you know, a recap of two, three weeks ago of uh, Romans chapter 1, no, uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. But the recap for us is, you know, to remind us that, you know, therefore, that since we've been justified, that we've been made right with God, this justification that we've been uh, going through, this salvation, this sanctification you know, that we've all been going through together, uh, that, that we've been justified by faith, we have access to grace, we have peace with God, and we also have the hope for the glory of God. And so those are three components that I touched base on three, four weeks ago, I kind of lost track, you know, like I said, it's been a crazy week, and so I'm going to continue to just talk, uh, you know, dive deeper into uh, more components of what Paul is trying to communicate to us here, about being, that we have been justified, justified by faith, right? we've been made right with God, um, what do we benefit, what do we have as believers, as body of believers. So we're going to continue to 
uh, just dive into the, the Word of God and to see what Paul is trying to tell us. And that we are now in this family together. What benefit do we have? And so, and, you know, just something that, um, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, this month is Easter, and, you know, next week is Palm Sunday, and then the following week is going to be the death and the resurrection on Good Friday. And, uh, oh, sorry. And, you know, something that, you know, we've been going through is you know, we've been talking about the gospel. We've been, we've been talking about the gospel, the gospel, the good news, Christ, the death, the resurrection. You know, I hope and pray that man doesn't become something that is cliche to us. Oh man, we heard that a million times, but to me, a million times is never enough. A, m- a million times, man, I, I, I still want to hear this good. Million time reminded, man, I am a broken person. I am saved. And a million time, I, 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 I sit in this what well, we continue to preach as Christians, that the gospel, the good news, that what He came to to do for us. And I, I hope and pray that man, it doesn't become something cliche for us, so that that has been oh, it's been repeated so many times. Because I'm going to continue to do so. And Paul is going to continue to do so. And throughout scriptures, if you guys think that that's just too much, you guys are saying that the word of God is just boring. And I heard this a million times. As I heard it enough. But it's an encouragement for us that and even in our happiest time, we rejoice in the death and the resurrection. In our darkest time, we, we rejoice in our death and resurrection. Not just that, but may we see that as something urgency. We, well, we may share with our brothers and sisters, our father, our mother, our daughter, our son, even our grandparents. And that's, you know, last couple of weeks, you know, that was the application I gave us. And that's going to, Stand for us as well and as we continue on. So with that being said, let's read. <clears throat> Verse 3. You know what? I'm just going to start from verse 1 and then we'll just catch on from verse 3. It, it, it probably makes more sense like that. It says, Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also attained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produce character. And character produce hope. And hope does not put us to shame because, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for our God. For one will sacredly die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's the word of God for us. And that's what we're going to dive into what it means, right? To rejoice in our suffering. Many of us may be like, man, I thought that the Christian life, everything was green grass, right? 
that everything is going to be great, that I'm going to receive these blessings. But why? Here it says, rejoice in your suffering. Okay, re- it, 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 it's telling us to rejoice in the suffering because it, it, man, it, it is something that we cannot escape. This is the reality that we live in, brothers and sisters. That there is no escape from this suffering that we will go through. But Pierre Paul says that, yeah, we may suffer. I don't know what you guys are going through. And the word suffering in other translation can also you know, be defined as uh, tribulations, like trials. I don't know what you guys are going through. And I hope that in these trials and tribulations that you guys take heart. That you guys man, don't man, don't fall from your faith. Hey, it continues, it says, Rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Suffering is something that's supposed to help us with our faith, strengthen our faith. What does a runner do, right? To, to go and train for, I don't know, the 10K run or something. They practice, they run so they can build this endurance. They suffer through this process so that they can run this race. And likewise, for us, when we go through this suffering, a time of just the unknown, in times of darkness, that we don't lose heart. That we continue to run this race. To run with, you know, that it will produce endurance for us to hold true to that. You know, like I you know, told you guys, man, my, my, my dad just passed away. Like, man, that was, I, I wouldn't say it was the darkest time in my life. I would say that it was the happiest time in my life. Not because I'm happy that he died and I was able to witness him having the same hope that I had and continue to have. And I I, I rejoice in that to see that man. Yeah, I'll tell you guys. When my dad was sick, I go to the bedroom and I I'll, I'll, I'll sit there at my you know what we call my dad's death, right? and I would like cry and just drop tears and man finally on the day that man I you know I I was able I was always trying to like share the gospel with him just to just to get like a sense of like him saying man I believe I know he believed but I wanted to see for myself you know from his mouth and the day that you know Sufu came over and prayed for him to. To see him accept that he said that, hey, I still held on to this hope. That was the happiest time of my life. That was the Man, it, I guess you could say that, man, that was like a good suffering, right? That it, it was man, such a profound moment for me. Not just to see my brother as a sister, but man, to see my father. To think to myself, man, does my father even have this hope that I have? And to see in my own eyes, man, such a profound moment. 
And so, and, and I, I wouldn't consider that a suffering time for me. Many of you guys would. But man, it's the happiest moment of my life. And I, I hope that you guys share the same as well. To hold on to this hope that when something crazy as this in life, that the reality that we may face, that we would have this hope that Paul will continue to talk about it, right? And that's my hope for you guys as my brothers and sisters. You guys may not, you know, be going through this reality that I am facing right now. Most of you guys have. And, and you guys are standing right here because, man, praise God that you guys have the same hope. So what is this hope? And I will continue to expound on that as we continue on, okay? So rejoice. So rejoice in our suffering. Know that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. What is his character? What is these? You know, we, we see that a runner, when they run, they go and practice. They try to do these sufferings of running like, I don't know, going, trying to run a 30K mile so they can out be a 10K mile. You know, they, they're going through this suffering. They're, what characters are they building? They're, they're, they're building, you know, for a runner, they might be building stamina, power, endurance, you know, be able to run forever. Have uh, fast stamina. But what is these endurance and these character for us as believers? What does what does these endurance create? What are these characters? So for us as you know, these characters we may consider it as godly character. These sufferings and you know, suffering producing seeing character or endurance and endurance producing character. These characters as believers are godly characters. And so what are these godly godly characters, right? In Galatians 5, 20, verse uh, 22, 23, it says, this is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the character that it builds for us as we Suffer as we endure, and as we endure, it builds his character. As we continue to walk into this Christian life, another passage that I wanted to was just take us to see these characters. Or I would say maybe a Biblical character for us to see. And who here knows the story of Job? So you guys don't know about the story of Job. Some of you guys do. So this the story about Job it is a wealthy man. He had everything. He had man a family. He's a grandfather. He had kids. He had a big farm. Back then, livestock was like a big, you know, big thing, right? The more, the more sheep you have, the more money you have, the wealthier you are. And that was Job. And not just that, man. He was a faithful servant of God. Here, Satan comes before God and say, Hey, I bet that I go and destroy Job's life. I bet he would turn from you. That he would turn from you. Little did this Satan, little did he know that Job was a faithful man. He, he was a faithful man. All these things, 
were taken from him. His kids died. His whole family got wiped. Beside his, beside his, uh, his wife. He lost everything. He was, man, like in clothed in sickness. And here, you know, listen to this passage. This is Job chapter 2, verse 9. Says, then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as the one of the, fool, of the foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive good from God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not see. That's the story of Job for us. There's a, a man of faith that when now all these things happen to him in his life, he, he continued to praise God. He continued to be faithful to God. And, and, and likewise, it is, it's, just, it's what Paul is preaching here in, in to us, right? That we have faith, and that we are, and that we are justified, right? Through our sufferings, it, it produces these characters, and I, I truly believe that that Joel carried these characters, these godly characters. He was patient. He was he was patient with the Lord, because not just. That God took everything away, but he also blessed Job at the end. Because of his faithfulness. But for us, I hope that you know, we don't see the story of Job in a way like that, that, oh, but God's gonna bless us with worldly things like Job Job received. I want us to understand that. Our sufferings, not just the one suffering you're going through, but the many sufferings that we are going through, because suffering, you know, it, 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 there's an S in there. That meant this suffering that we're going through, this, that in this blessing that we're going to receive, it's going to be much more and much better than what Joel received here in the earth, right? In the world. This process of suffering is also a process of sanctification as well. A way that is transforming us to see that you know, we are being set apart right, to be made holy. So this process of suffering is also a process of us being sanctified as well. That is making us holy. It's teaching us to be patient with the Lord. That the Lord is going to carry us. That even though we're walking through the darkest valley that we ever walked in, you know, I encourage us that in, uh, for us to see that, man, there's, there, there's beauty at the end of the world. And what is this beauty? What is this suffering that is producing for us? Here, suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Here is taking us back to what we just talked about two, three weeks ago, about that we exalt in the hope of the glory of God. It, it, it circles us right back. That this character produces this hope, this hope in the glory of God that one day, one day when we die, we, we're going to be with him again. 
And this is the suffering that it will produce. That it will give us. It will give us hope. And in order to, to hold on to this hope, we are strengthened by this suffering that we are going through. Not, not, not that we are also being strengthened by the suffering we're going through, but we're also being, you know, being empowered the Spirit. At, at the end of verse 5, it says that God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And that's what we hope for. And that's what we long for. And that we, when we leave this We'll be in the presence of the Lord. We'll, and we'll be made new. This is the hope. And in verse 2 of chapter 1, it says that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And we long and we wait for that, that day to come. And so through our sufferings, and through what we're going through, you know, I, I hope and pray that you know, it's something that will empower us to encourage us to press on forward. You know, like, like many people say, right? This, like many great pastors and leaders say, is that we're we're running this Christian life. The order we get, the harder it gets. And then saying, likewise, as a runner, the longer they run, the the harder it gets. So through our suffering, may we keep the gospel close to our hearts. May we keep the love of God close to our hearts. Because of, because of this hope that we long for, it, this hope will not put us to shame. Like in verse 5, this hope does not put us to shame. It will not disappoint us. It, it, it didn't disappoint me. You see, the hope that my dad had, I was, I was, I was the happiest guy. Ever. You know, and just just talking about that, I, I'm you know reminded of. Now I, I go back to. Somewhere on the mount so much. Right? Blessed, blessed those who mourn for their And we we mourn because man, we we know that we're sinner and that we're gonna die here one day. But not just that, but we're gonna rejoice one day because of the hope of the glory of God. We're we're gonna celebrate together. We're here in this earth, in this world that we live in. We're, we're, we're going to go through that reality. Let's continue on. Verse 6. While we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will sacredly die for a righteous person, though perhaps a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Who in here seeing like somebody do something bad and uh, their friend like backed them up? Most of the time, you guys probably wouldn't do it, right? I, I, you know, I, I, I know... Um, you know, just kind of growing up, you know, among people, you know, like gang related stuff, right? When somebody like do something, they get snitched on, dude. Like, man, the, no, no, no one does. You know, there's there's not a person who 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 do something good for for someone who is you know, a a bad person. But you know, in 
in the reality that we live in, we do good to people who do good to us, right? Perhaps, you know, not a lot of times, but you know, most of the time, we, we see. But here, I want us to understand that, man. No one, no one died. No one would like take a bullet for a, a person who does bad. If you guys know it truly, you know, for example, right? If, if this guy is gonna be put into, you know, be executed because he killed a lot of people, he said, "Hey, I'll take your spot. I'll, I'll take his spot so he can live." Nah, no one would do that. No one would do that. Guarantee, no one. But here, the God, He demonstrated that for us. He sent His Son to die for us. Yet, when we were sinners, it, it says that while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. We were the ungodly. We were the, the one who and our, our, our children are wrath who deserve to die. They had the right time. Their Christ, he died for us. I want to just take us back to chapter, chapter 3. This is us. This is us before we were justified. This is us before we were, man, before we knew Christ. This is us. No one is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongue to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curse and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their path are ruin and misery. The way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's us. Even, even now. But because, but because we know Christ, and because of what Christ has done, that we've been going through chapter 3, chapter 4, this process of what it means to be justified, what it means to be made right with God, we are not saved by works, whereby we are saved by grace, and we are saved, we are saved by faith alone. That's salvation for us. It's not our doing. We cannot save ourselves. We we are like what Paul had just quote from the Old Testament. This is us. But because of Christ. He died for us, the ungodly people. In order that we may have life. That we may share this hope and the glory of God together. If we have faith, if we believe, if we come to accept Christ, it's there, it's free. There's, there's no need for us to do anything to receive that. It's there. Receive it. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath. You know, in the beginning that, you know, beginning what I was saying about the gospel, 
about the good news, about the death and death and resurrection of Christ. Hold fast to it. Believe it like your life depends on it. I'm being saved. You know, in 1 Corinthians, it says that, man, this hope that we have, this gospel that we believe in, man, it's a stumbling block to the Jewish people. It's foolish to a lot of us. But this hope gives us life. So hold fast to it. For those who have lost a loved one, hold fast to it. Hold fast to this hope and that one day we can rejoice with them. And I hope and pray that you know, those who have gone, man, they hold fast to the same hope that we have. We are, that we claim to hold. So for my brothers and sisters, I, I encourage us to, man, to just hold on to this, this truth. And, and, and to see that, man, it matters. And, and this, this, this Christian life that we're, we're running and, you know, it's, it's going to get only harder. The whole dare to it, that's like your life matters. Like your life depends on it. That without this, I'm dead. It's all fast to And that's why I rejoice what my dad has he has gone he has gone through that. And I rejoice because my dad holds fast to the same thing that I hope. I hope I hold fast to this to this hope.